So how come one barrel of crude oil is about $70 and yet one pill of this is about $10? Let's talk about bulk chemicals and fine chemicals. <music> Hey, what is up guys? Welcome once again to the channel. It's always great to have you back and if you are new, don't forget to subscribe. In this channel, we talk about chemical and process engineering for both students and professionals. So stick around to learn about these topics. So probably you're wondering why I was comparing these pharmaceuticals with crude oil. And to be honest, I want to talk about chemicals and how we classify them. As you most likely know, chemical engineers are those persons, those magical people that convert raw materials that may not be so useful or so interesting or so applicable in our daily life into products that we use extensively in both final consumer products or industrial applications. And I'm talking about raw materials, bulk chemicals, also known as basic chemicals, commodities, specialty chemicals and fine chemicals. I don't want to overwhelm you with so many concepts on chemicals, so what I want to do first is get to know the Klein matrix. For those that may not be that familiar with Klein matrix, it's a comparison of chemicals in two ways. Number one, the amount of production, either low amount or very high amount, versus the value added to that final chemical. This means that we have four quadrants. The number one will be very high production and low value. Then we have very high production and higher value. Then we have low production, low value. And finally, we have very low production, but very high value. I try to classify chemicals in these four quadrants, but to get started, we need to understand what is a raw material. And I still remember my very first class on chemical products was the topic, and we were asked to write common raw materials in the chemical industry. And of course, we all were writing like acid, bases, maybe even crude oil, uh, gasolines and all that. And for our surprise, this was a trick question because the professor wanted to show us that we were entirely wrong. The concept of raw material is actually something that you can find in nature. So by definition, you cannot find gasoline in nature you cannot find wood in nature, you cannot find acid in nature by itself. He really wanted us to list trees, if we were talking about wood. He wanted us to list crude oil, if we were talking about gasoline. He wanted us to say air instead of oxygen, nitrogen, argon. He wanted us to say iron ores instead of steel. So we got the idea. If you find it in nature, for instance, you can find sand, you can find soil, you can find water. All that is a raw material. But more importantly, the value of a chemical engineer is converting such material into much more valuable materials for society. Now that we understand what is a raw material, it's time to get started. So the very first one will be commodities. And we're talking about the very high production of material and no value added or a very small amount of value added. I'm pretty sure that you are familiar with the name. Probably crude oil pops into mind, maybe steel production, maybe even coal. We're talking about a very large amount of materials that are essentially there. We're not going to be changing that much their chemical composition. We're just going to refine them. We're just going to try to purify them and end up with a final version of the material of interest. In this type of industries, you will not see that much chemical changes and therefore you do not require very drastic amounts of chemical technologies or applications. And these type of companies also run in continuously operated processes, meaning that they need to produce very large amounts in order to become competitive. There's also a very high amount of competition and the barrier to entry is mostly very low if you compare it, of course, into a company standard meaning that there is no entry level with respect to technology. So there is no drastic technological changes. There's no drastic patents that you need to apply. There's always application of the best practices in the industries. One of the advantages of these type of companies or these type of business or markets is that they need to produce a lot. So there's a lot of points. So most of them are mostly driven by prices, but their locations are key. So for instance, if you have one ton of crude oil in point A, but you have another ton of crude oil in point B, and both are pretty similar, sulfur so content, density, let's say they are virtually the same because they are commodities. 
what you will be selecting is mostly the strategical position. It's like you're going to a convenience store. You don't care the convenience store as long as they are selling you the commodity or the product that you're looking for. Also, these are companies that are international. Typically, they will hire a lot of engineers. So there is a lot of job opportunity out there for chemical engineers. Now we get to the bulk chemicals or basic chemicals, which are pretty interesting because as stated before, previously we didn't change that much the chemical composition of our product. See, if we are talking about crude oil, we are just separating it into gasolines or so. But in this specific case, we need to use chemical knowledge and therefore this implies a greater addition of value. Although these materials or products may not be that differentiated versus other companies, they may still vary from, I don't know, company A versus company B. And of course, pricing is also an issue. Hence, it is still important to have the technological advantage, the marketing advantage, and of course, the strategic advantage. Some of the best examples I can mention here are acids, such as sulfuric acid, hydrochloric acids, are also bases such as ammonia or sodium hydroxide. We may be talking about materials that will be used in fertilizers, for instance, phosphoric acid, ammonium nitrate, ammonium sulfates. We may be also thinking on ammonium carbonate, ammonium chlorates. We may also think now on petrochemicals, those materials that will be converted into maybe plastics or fine chemicals later on. For instance, we're talking about benzene, we're talking about methanol, we're talking about ethylene, propylene, we're talking about vinyl chloride, we're talking about styrene, we're also talking about maybe thereophthalic acid, which will end up as PTA, acetic acids, methanol, ethanols, and all these type of organic materials. So hopefully you get the idea of what we're talking about on bulk and basic chemicals are those chemicals that you may not find quite in nature, but is pretty simple if we add some chemical knowledge and engineering to that. Still, we're talking about very huge amount of materials being produced continuously and still talking about low cost of material per unit mass. Now it's time to talk about on the specialty chemicals. These are very smaller amount if you compare them to the basic ones or to the commodity ones but doesn't mean that you will not find them anywhere. Actually, these are chemicals that you will find readily available as a consumer product or maybe certain applications in the industry. And still they are low in value in the sense that they have not been changed drastically chemically. They are maybe mixed chemicals or different compositions. So for instance, antifreeze is just a mixture of water and glycol. So it may sound very fancy, but it's nothing more than two chemicals that are mixed. And of course they are in the best proportions, but nothing out of this world. Another great example will be paintings or coatings. And as the name implies, these are nothing more than material used for painting a house or a wall or something like that. Protect it, of course, and also protect it from the environment and the sunlight and so on. But essentially what a paint is, is nothing more than a solvent, a binder, additive, and a pigment. Talking of which, these four can already be specialty chemicals. Still, you get the idea of these chemicals are being mixed and of course you treat them a little bit chemically speaking, but the final composition is nothing out of this world. Still guys, it's important to remark that if you were to compare the basic chemical price per kilo and the specialty chemical price per kilo, this will be at least 10, 100 times more than the original basic material. Talking in this specific section of the matrix, I really think that there is a lot of opportunity for chemical engineers out there. You don't need to be making the best top of the line chemical. You can always create materials within this section. I know that maybe going back to commodities is very hard. It's really hard to buy a refinery for yourself, I know. Or it's really hard to buy maybe a container from China. But I really think that as a chemical engineer, you don't need to have the best technologies to create detergents, soaps, uh, maybe food additives, maybe paintings, coatings, maybe even agrochemical fungicides, bactericides, maybe disinfectants or cleaning materials. So what I'm talking about here is that this is the niche in which if you want to maybe create something new, you can do it without that entry barrier problem. 
And finally, guys, I would say that this section is the pinnacle of chemical engineering. By definition, as a chemical engineer, we want to convert the very low valuable material into very high value materials. And this is what fine chemicals are. Fine chemicals are those materials that are not produced extensively. Actually, they may be very niche applications. So you can be producing a polymer for certain application, or you can be producing a resin that only works at certain industry. Maybe you are creating this ultimate plastic for a automobile that will be used once or so. Not only that, you may also think about catalysts, pharmaceuticals, those materials, active ingredients that are very unique, that are very differentiated, that require a lot of research and development, a lot of technology, a lot of scientific studies, and so on. As you can imagine, the price per kilo goes to the roof. It's nothing comparable to maybe commodities or basic chemicals. It doesn't make sense also to compare them because those are pretty straightforward materials that are created with little no knowledge or technologies. But right now we're talking about very high technology or research behind these scientific materials. Let's make a special focus in this section. You may think of a lot of companies that are going and trying to solve those little niche applications and that's correct. You will see that there is a company for X application. You will see that there is a company solving such problem and so on. So there are a lot of companies trying to solve these problems that may not be huge problems, but are very distinct problems. So let's talk about this beautiful material right here, which is a scotch whiskey. You can see this may not be the fine chemical, of course, but you can sell it as a very differentiated chemical. And yes, it is a very differentiated chemical if you check out the price per milliliter. So let's think about all the materials that we may have required to produce this beautiful liquor. So first things first, commodities, low value, but very high amount. I'm thinking about water and I'm thinking about barley. Now let's think about on the basic chemicals. So maybe agrochemicals that were used to create crop, maybe the gasoline that was used in order to uh, distillate the material, but it's not quite here. Although I know there are certain processes which actually include the uh, peat uh, flavor, so let's say that for now. Now let's go for specialty chemicals and I can only think about colorant. Uh, this is a scotch whiskey. I think they are allowed and they are in fact having colorant. And finally, the fine chemical is the final product. So once again, if you compare this, it's technically speaking, just alcohol, water, colorant. It should be a specialty chemical product. Still, due to the marketing and the design for human consumption, I would say that this could be considered a fine chemical-ish, depending on the price. That will be up to you guys. But you get the idea of how this chemical can be priced very expensive. So that's it guys. Those are the ways in which we separate and categorize chemicals in the chemical industry. I hope you learned something new today. I'm pretty sure I did researching a lot of topics. There are a lot of ways in which chemicals can be distributed or categorized, but I really think that this is the most common one. And please let me know guys, if you think that maybe there's another category or maybe I shouldn't add that many categories because I know that a lot of people just love to say bulk chemicals or commodities and fine chemicals or treated chemicals. That's also valid. There's no unique way to categorize. I also know that there is a way in which inorganic materials are separated and organic materials are separated. That's okay, fine as well. I also have one friend that says that he categorizes chemicals as pharmaceuticals and non-pharmaceuticals. That's fine, okay. Depending on the industry or company or maybe location you are, that may be the case and that's fine. But for now, I think those four categories are good enough. Okay guys, that will be it on my behalf and I'll see you in the next video. Thumbs up if you are all in for whiskey. Actually one of my favorite drinks. I really enjoy how alcohol mixture and all the flavors are there.